guide us with those whom you have guided oh Allah guide us with those whom you have guided Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidin Mursaleen Amma ba'd فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وصحابك يا نور الله The Holy Prophet صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم has said The one who recites durood upon me once Allah تعالى shows ten mercies upon him صلوا على الحبيب صلى الله تعالى على محمد صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم. I welcome my dear viewers of Madani channel back to our سلسلة known as our role models in which الحمد لله عز وجل we realize who our true role models are whom should we follow. Every episode الحمد لله we speak regarding a personality who should be our true role model. We speak regarding a sahabi or we speak regarding a wali of Allah سبحانه وتعالى. And in order to spend our life successfully in this world and to be successful in the hereafter, it is very essential and vital that we understand who our true role model is. Our true role model is none other than the Holy Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam who is the example in everything. He has taught us everything practically and all those are our role models who are truly on the footsteps of our beloved master, the Holy Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Today, inshallah azza wa jal, we will speak regarding a very great saint of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has a very special rank in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and of course, he has a very special rank in our Qadriya silsila. Sayyidina Imam Baqir rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi. Sayyidina Imam Baqir Rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi is a descendant of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He is a Sayyid and he is from the lineage of Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He was a great sahib karamat and a personality with a vast knowledge of the hadith. Qazi Abu Yusuf rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi says, I asked Imam Abu Hanifa radiallahu ta'ala anhu if he had met Imam Baqir radiallahu ta'ala anhu and he said, yes. I have met him and I asked a mas'ala, an Islamic law from him. He replied it so beautifully that never before have I heard anyone reply to a shara'i ruling so beautifully. Imam Baqir rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi was born in Madinatul Munawwara three years before the battle of Karbala on the 3rd of Safar, 57th of Hijri. His name is Muhammad. He is also known as Abu Ja'far and his titles are Baqir, Shami, Shakir and Hadi. He attained his education under the tutorship of his blessed father. He studied Hadith under his father and also attained knowledge of Hadith from Hazrat Ibn Abbas, Hazrat Jabir bin Abdullah and Abu Sa'id Khudri, Bibi Aisha and Bibi Umm Salama radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in. Hazrat Jabir radiallahu ta'ala who says, I was in the blessed court of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala who was in the blessed arms of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, O Jabir, a son shall be born to him whose name shall be Ali. He will have a child whose name shall be Muhammad, meaning Imam Baqir. O Jabir, if you meet him, then you should pass my salam towards him. Just imagine, his wiladat, his birth, his appearance in the world was foretold by our beloved master, the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Undoubtedly, the rank of Sayyidina Imam Baqir radiallahu ta'ala anhu is very elevated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has a very high level of wilayat. He was a very great devotee of Sarkar al-Alam sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Hazrat Imam Baqir if we talk about physical appearance, how he was structured, 
how did he look what was his physical appearance so imam baqir radiyallahu ta'ala anhu was not a very tall person he was tan in complexion and the example of his predecessors both in looks and in character he looked like his father and his forefathers and his akhlaq his character was also an example of his forefathers and the lineage in which he belonged to he is from the lineage of sayyidina ali radiyallahu ta'ala anhu and he was amongst the sadat he was from the lineage of sarkar ul alam sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam now imam baqir his original name is muhammad but why do we call him baqir why is he known as imam baqir the word baqir comes from the word baqirul ard which means to tear open the earth and unveil its treasures imam baqir radiyallahu ta'ala anhu was given this title baqir because he opened the secret doors of spiritualism and expounded the beauties and splendors of ruhaniyat he opened all the doors and treasures of ruhaniyat and presented in front of the people he opened all the treasures and doors of mercy and presented towards the people he opened all the doors of knowledge so that people may seek advantage from it so that people may benefit from that that's the reason why imam baqir was called as baqir whereas his original name was muhammad the ulama would sometimes ask him numerous questions and some even asked to test his knowledge sometimes they do come certain people who come to ask questions to test what is the knowledge of ulama e karam do they know or they do not know so people hold such kind of attributes in them unfortunately but in this situation when people would come to ask him so many questions he answered every question with answers which could have no doubt once whilst on the plains of arafat he was asked 1000 questions and he answered every one of them in the light of sharia so what we learn here a very important point that sometimes imam baqir radiyallahu ta'ala anhu would get people who would come to him to ask questions to test his knowledge capacity so first of all we learn here that if someone comes to irritate us if someone comes to trouble us for nothing we should not retaliate we should not get angry on that person in fact we should keep our humbleness we should not forget kindness we should not forget the sunnah of our beloved nabi sallallahu ta'ala alaihi wasallam we should stay quiet we should stay humble and we should stay kind so that the person will understand with love instead of making him understand with a harsh behavior and secondly a very important point that the ulama e karam should not be tested we should not go to the ulama e karam to ask them masail or islamic laws in order to comprehend that how much they know no this is not right ulama e karam are the crowns of our heads ulama e karam are very respectable they are our leaders they are our masters and we go to that alim e din we go to a certain maulana and maulana tell me about this tell me about that we ask such technical questions such deep questions while we already know that backbiting is haram tail telling is haram lying is haram all these things they are haram evil citing is haram doing all such things are haram he knows what is his income what is his outgoing he knows everything but yet they will come with technical issues and ask the maulana sahab that maulana sahab tell me whether this is right this is wrong technical why to trap that maulana so that later on he may talk to his friends about that certain maulana you so i got him stuck you so he doesn't know anything such things we tend to practice upon this is quite wrong we should not be doing like this this is very un-islamic this is actually the method of the ignorant people and we should not act as ignorant people we are a decent nation and we should act like decent people so imam baqir radiyallahu ta'ala anhu was very excellent when it came to the islamic knowledge and islamic jurisprudence when you talk about his character so imam baqir radiyallahu ta'ala anhu was a great abid was a great worshiper a very great zahid he was a very obedient servant of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and a great faqih a very great jurist of islam he had very powerful restraint over his nafs he would always control his nafs he would not let his inner self 
overpower him. In fact, he would overpower his nafs. His son, Hazrat Imam Jafar, radiallahu ta'ala anhu says, my father would often wake up in the middle of the night and weep in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When last have we weeped in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? When last have we performed a sajda only for the sole pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? When last have we woke up in the middle of the night when everyone is sleeping and worshipped in such a way that only I know and my creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows? When have we cried in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? When have we only made sajda only for the sole pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? When last have we cried while reading the Holy Quran? When last have we cried while listening to the Holy Quran? When last have we cried out of the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? When last have we cried out of the love of the Holy Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam? I should think, all the viewers of Madani channel should think, when last did we act upon such a great practice of our awliya ikram? We do not do so. Our regrets, our sadness are all worldly based. Maybe you faced a loss in your business. You get tears in your eyes. Maybe you met up in an accident. You start crying. We tend to be like that. Well, this is very incorrect. Our main purpose should be the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the pleasure of his Nabi sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. So Imam Baqir rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi would wake up middle of the night and he would weep in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He would then with complete humility say the following, O oh Allah Azza wa Jal, you commanded me to do all good things, but I did not fulfill this. And you commanded me to abstain from all wrongs and I could not keep myself from wrong. I am your humble servant standing in your exalted court. And I am a criminal in your court and I have no excuse my Rabb. This is the statement of a great Imam of his time. This is the statement of such a pious saint of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the statement of such a great alim of the knowledge of fiqh and the knowledge of Islam. What are we? We are just ordinary human beings. If an Imam of such great level can have such a mindset, he has such level of God-fearingness, he has such level of taqwa, he has such level of fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then why shouldn't we create this habit in our heart? Why shouldn't we create this sense and feeling in our heart that these were so noble personalities? We are nothing. These people were in reality pious, but considered themselves as sinful and criminals. But we in reality are criminals. But unfortunately, we consider ourselves to be very nice. This is not right. We should consider ourselves to be the worst of creation. Those awliya-i karam used to consider them as so sinful. We are very far away from them. We should act upon the footsteps. And insha'Allah, Azza wa Jal, by acting upon their footsteps, one day, insha'Allah, we will also get this attribute of fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from our heart and loving the Holy Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. And we will get this attribute of shedding tears out of the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Abu Basir rahmatullahi ta'ala says, I was once in the court of Hazrat Imam Baqir radiallahu ta'ala anhu and I asked him, are you the heir of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Are you the inheritor of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? And he said, yes. I then asked if the Holy Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam was the inheritor of all other prophets alayhi salam. And he said, yes. I said, then you too are the inheritors of the knowledge of the court of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he said, I presume that it is so. I then said, can you bring the dead back to life, cure the leper and cause the blind to see? And can you say what people eat in their houses and what they hoard? These qualities were the qualities of the Anbiya Karam. They were the mujizat of Anbiya Karam. So he asked, can you do such things? When you claim to be their inheritor, you are from their lineage. Can you do such things? He said, yes, we too can do it with the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He then said, come near me. Abu Nasir was a blind man and he placed his hands over my face and I began to see the sky, the earth and the mountains. He then said, do you wish to remain seeing and for your actions to be just likewise by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Or do you wish to remain blind and attain Jannat in exchange for your blindness? I said that I want Jannat. 
He then ran his hands over my eyes once more and I could not see again. Look at this karamat of Sayyidina Imam Baqir rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi. He was the true inheritor of the prophets alayhi salam. He demonstrated his karamat. After he demonstrated his karamat, he asked the person, do you want your good deeds or bad deeds to be judged by this power of seeing? Because obviously, if you see, you might get trapped by shaitan in using your eyes in the wrong things, which unfortunately is widespread in today's generation. In nowadays time, but the nigahi is so common, but the nigahi has become so easy that it has also become hard to save ourselves from this sin. Unfortunately, may Allah Ta'ala grant us the tawfiq that we save our eyes from committing evil. May we save our minds from thinking evil. May we save our tongues from speaking evil. Anyways, so Sayyidina Imam Baqir Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali asked him, Do you want your good deeds to be judged by this power of yours? Or in exchange of your blindness, do you want Jannat? He said, Ya Sayyidi, if I am blind, I will commit less sins. And thus, inshaAllah, I shall get Jannah. So I prefer Jannat over my eyes. So Sayyidina Imam Baqir Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali placed his hand over his eyes and he could no longer see after that. Just imagine the mindset of even those who were close to the awliya Allah. So we should create the spiritual bond with our awliya ikram. And how would we do that? We would create a spiritual bond when we really take them as our role models. We do claim that they are our role models. But let's take them as our role models practically. Let's practice on this seerat. They used to cry in the bargain of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's also develop this habit. They used to love the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Let's also develop this habit. They used to only speak the truth. Let's develop this habit. They cared about the poor people so much. Let's also create this habit in ourselves. And inshallah ta'ala, when we do this, we are in other words creating a spiritual bond with these personalities. And inshallah ta'ala, when we are connected spiritually with these personalities, then we will be successful in this world and in the Akhirah as well. And ultimately, we will attain the reward of Jannah, insha'Allah. Imam Baqi rahmatullahi ta'ala Ali, such a great sheikh. There are many pearls of wisdom. There are many nasihas which he used to give to the people. Insha'Allah, I will mention few of his nasihas which we can take it for ourselves and take it as a lesson of our life. Abu Sa'id Mansur ibn Hussain rahmatullahi ta'ala Ali writes in his book, that Imam Baqir Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali told his son Imam Jafar Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali the following. Oh my dear son, Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal has hidden three things within three things. Firstly, he has hidden his pleasure in his obedience. You do not know in which command of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, Allah Ta'ala's pleasure is hidden. So don't underestimate any good deed. Don't underestimate any command of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Because Allah Ta'ala's pleasure is hidden in the obedience of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Then he carried on and he said that he has hidden his wrath in his disobedience. Like he has hidden his pleasure in his obedience, he has hidden his displeasure in his disobedience. So do not underestimate any sin. A sin may seem to be very small. A sin may seem to be very small. But it may be very big in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah ta'ala's anger is hidden in Allah ta'ala's disobedience. Thus do not think of any sin as minor. Always remember that a minor sin may also lead you to the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And thirdly, he has hidden the awliya Allah amongst the people. From amongst the people, it will be hard for you to distinguish which one is the wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Amongst common, ordinary people, Allah ta'ala has hidden his chosen servants. So we should be careful who we talk to, how we talk to, what attitude do we keep with him. Because we do not know which person is a friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Which person is very close towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imam Baqir radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, the Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam said, When you see the lightning, then read, Allahumma la taqtulna bi ghadabika wa la tuhlikna bi adabika. That, O oh Allah azza wa jal, do not destroy us with your anger and do not destroy us with your wrath. 
This is the dua when we see lightning. And this is what Imam Baqir radiallahu ta'ala anhu has taught us no matter what the circumstances are, no matter whatever the situation is, always remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's take this as our lesson and act upon the seerat of Sayyidina Imam Baqir radiallahu ta'ala anhu. May Allah ta'ala grant us the tawfiq that we stay firm on the love of the awliya Allah and may we be able to act upon their footsteps. Ameen. Bijahin Nabi Ameen. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sallu al Habib. Sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad. Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Oh Allah, guide us with those whom you have guided. Oh Allah, guide us with those.